my friends. We are going to have a beautiful service today. The topic is, I want more, Lord. This is uh, Sunday, December 6th, 2020, the last month of the year. We are just about a few weeks of experiencing the new beginnings in 2021. Worship service 219, but we would like to mention one more time the importance of having your bulletins. Everyone here in the church has his own bulletin, and they are ready to take some notes. What about you, my friend? Go to the website, thechurch.us forward slash bulletins. If you just go on your browser to thechurch.us, you will be able to download the bulletin. Or if you are watching through a smart TV, you can just use the phone, open the camera, point towards the QR code, and download the bulletin of today's message. We want to thank you for your support, for all our friends, especially our beautiful church members. Thank you so much for supporting all that we do here in Victory Church. If you are interested in being part of this fabulous team of givers, go to vchurch.us forward slash give on your browser, or simply, if you prefer, just send a text message, 432-268-0007 and you will be able to support financially our ministry. We want to thank one more time Al Serrano, Tony McDaniel, Tracy, my wife, Donna Pounds, and my son Sebastian for your ideas about the thumbnail for this week's message. I was a little bit dry with ideas, and I was thinking, what can I use? And so I received all those uh, great suggestions. And so this is the thumbnail. Today, December 6, 2020, worship service number 219. The topic is, say all together, please. I want more, Lord. One more time, say it. I want more, Lord. Thank you so much. We will start by reading the scripture coming from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For the one who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. What a powerful scripture. We thank you, Lord. We read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you know what, guys? This is fantastic. Fantastic. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And you know, it is so funny because... When you talk with other believers, you will notice that a lot of believers don't have faith. <laughs> it is funny. Well, to a certain degree, it's funny. You know, somehow, honestly, it, it upsets me a little bit. You know, being honest, being honest with you sometimes upsets me because I think, what's wrong with you? You, you claim to be a believer, but when, when we are talking and I hear you, Telling me what kind of situations you are going through. You know what I hear? Lack of faith. But we claim to be believers. And here is the news. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So here is the main ingredient in our uh, supernatural form. Being, which is like blood. In our bodies, it's called faith. But if you don't have any faith, you cannot please God. So that's a predicament. Because if we cannot please God, my friends, how can we receive from God more? So when you are wondering, well, do I want more? No, I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm okay with, with whatever, you know. Whatever, whatever is what God wants. Some people say it that way say that. So here's one question for you. Are you satisfied with yourself, with your life, with everything around you? Yeah. Or do you want more? Yeah. Some people say, well, I, I would like more. I just don't know how to get that. <laughs> well, the one who, who owns everything, the one who has the authority to Bless you is the Lord God, and he will be moved by your tears and sufferings. No, he will not. Is that correct? No. 
<laughs> oh, okay. So God will be moved when you are angry and throwing a fit. Uh, no. Okay. Okay, I got it. God will move when he sees you that you give money to the church. So we're just trying to figure it out. Do we want more? Well, I would like more. I just don't know how to get it. Well, here is the main thing that you need to understand. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God. So every time we come to the presence of God in prayer or worshiping like we have just done, we must believe. This is what it, the scripture says. He says that, it says that when you come, you must believe that he exists, that he is the rewarder of those who seek him. Rewarder. Yeah, he's the rewarder. He will, he will bless you if you only believe that he exists. And when you seek him. So let's talk about what is what we all want? What about life? Do you want more life? No, no I just want to die. I'm ready to go to heaven. <laughs> really? I don't know. I just hear some people saying that, but it's because they are frustrated. But, you know, honestly, when, when I go through the conversations, and <laughs> you, you will not believe this, but... I have been in more contact with more people through this crisis than before yeah. without seeing one another. Mm -hmm. Phone calls, video chats, text messages. It's, it's amazing because everyone is going through a lot and they want to talk. And I say, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. We can talk. We can, we can work our things out and Try to fix our problems, right? And who is the one who will fix our problems? Our God, our Lord. Yeah. So, but sometimes I hear somebody that is really depressed and really down and frustrated. And, and I have heard some of them say, I would prefer just to, God, to go to heaven. You know, there is nothing else for me. I, I, and I think, well, you are saying that because you are frustrated. But deep down, you want more life. Now, what kind of life do we want? What kind of life do we want? Well, I want a, a good life. Okay, but describe it. What, what is a good life? What is a good life? And it's so interesting because a lot of people really don't know what is to have a good life. They don't even know where to begin to describe what is a good life. You know, the common mistake is it, immediately they think, well, if I have money, I will blah, 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 blah. So many people think that a good life is about money. And it is not. It is not. So what is exactly this idea that we have about I want more life? Well, some people say, well, I want to have a many, many years of life. I want to have a long life. Well, I would like that too. But you don't want to have many, many years of life if your years of life are going to be miserable. What's the point? You know, you want more life, which is a good life. Okay, so now I want you to hear this. I want you to listen to this, my friends. Try to pay attention because what I am about to tell you is a little bit complex to understand, but you can understand it. Okay. Some people want more life, they say, but the way that they are picturing that life is a life where they will have everything they want, whatever is that, it, that, that thing is, but they picture that life with them sitting down in a recliner with a drink here and a remote on the other hand next to their phone. That's the way that many, pe many people picture a good life. 
It's about a life of being sitting down, receiving, and being entertained by somebody. Okay. Here is the deal that I want you to try to grasp. The Lord God is not going to give you that life that you imagine exists until you get it that life is not about sitting down in a recliner with your drink, your remote, and your phone. Because what is the point? It's just being there, dormant. No. The life the Lord wants to give us is a life that He is going to inspire us and give us many wonderful things so we can go places and do things and share things and encourage people and bring life to others. I hope you understand what I am saying. If you want more from God, do you want more from God? Yes, yes, I want more. What is the first thing that we want? More life. Okay, this is the deal. The Lord is going to give you more life when, when, when finally you understand that life is not about receiving. It's about giving. He's not going to give you more life if all the objective of yours is to have a bigger recliner, softer recliner, larger cup for your drink, etc. Life is not about that, my friend. Life is about receiving from God what he has, he has for you to give, to share, in order to encourage others, listen to this carefully, in order to bring that godly life, the life from the Holy Spirit, to give it to others. To others. Other than that, all that you are becoming is in a bucket. You are a bucket. Just getting more and more and more and more. And eventually you're overflowing of life, right? I am so happy. But why am I not happy anymore? Here is the answer. The answer to the question of yours. That why you are unsatisfied with life is not because about what's going on around you. You are unsatisfied because there is an insatisfaction deep down in yourself because you can't find the joy, the true joy of giving and sharing. Receiving more life from God is doable. First of all, when you have faith, we agree on that, correct? We, we already agree on that. We need to have faith. You have that faith. Do you have that faith, my friend? Are you filled with the faith that comes from God, from His Word? You know that He can do greater, greater things, that He will give you a reward because you are seeking Him, so you have that faith. And now you say, yes, I have it. I have it. Okay, I want more life. Wonderful. But that life is not just for you just to receive things and you just continue filling that bucket. No. It's a life with godly things that are different from everybody. But you receive those things like treasures. And then you share that with different people because everyone around you needs something from you. Everyone, and you just can't even think about it because all, all that you are doing is just focusing on yourself. This is what I want. Again, stuff. And you, you just can't think of what is what you have that you can share. What is that wisdom? What is that joy? What is that great thing that you have that you can give to somebody else? The first thing we need from God is more life, but it's a life. It's an abundant life. To share and give. We, because there is more pleasure in giving than in receiving. You will cry of joy when you give something to somebody that was not expecting that. And then you see how happy that person is. You will be really moved. 
And you know what? You immediately will turn to heaven and you will say, Lord, that was good. That was good, Lord. I like that. I like the feeling of giving. You, do you want more life? Wonderful. Forget about the recliner, please. Forget about the recliner. Life is about receiving from God to give. That doesn't mean that you don't need to rest. That doesn't mean that you are not going to enjoy your recliner and your shows. You will, but it's not the number one thing. All right. Let's go back again to that scripture. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For the one who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is rewarder of those who seek him. He is going to reward those who seek him. Now, you have examples of that in your own life, correct? You have lived that. Don't tell me you haven't because you have. All of us, at some point, have received blessings from God because we did the right thing. And how do we feel every time the Lord gives us a reward because we did the right thing. We are just in awe. And we are so happy about it. Because he can reward you when you seek him first. Yeah. So you know what is interesting about it? Is it is like a cycle. Because you feel excited and happy. Which increases your faith. You are pleasing more God. The Lord God is happier with you. He was going to give you more, and then more rewards, more joy. And then, you understand, it's a cycle. It's a never-ending cycle. So, first we want more life. But what is the next thing, if we are alive, that we want? Well, we want good health and strength. Right? We want good health and strength. So, my friend, if you are sick or weak, if your health is not in a good shape, remember, we all go through seasons, especially with the crisis of this year. And, of course, it's not fun. Well, to a certain degree, it could be fun. You know, I don't know if you have heard the song, The Bye Bye is Coming, The Bye Bye. Watch it and laugh with that, okay? But this year has been just, oh boy, unbelievable. Nobody will forget, never, ever, ever, 2020. We will say, 2020, I remember that year. What a year, you know. Oh, what a year. You know, it's, let me tell you. And many of us have <laughs> suffered a lot in our health. If you are right now sick, if you are infected, we understand, but there are some things in our health that are just seasonal, okay? And you are going to get out of that bad season, and you will be good. But for, for those who are sick, I want to talk to you, my friend. If you have a, a terrible illness, if you have a horrible disease, and even doctors have said to you, that is incurable, you are going to die because of that, Etc. So you are thinking, do I want more life like this? I don't think so. Hmm, but I will like good health and strength. Yeah. Okay, so, but doctor said that it is impossible. Doctor said this, doctor said that. I'm not going to fight and argue with a professional expert in, in health care. I'm not one of those. <laughs> but I, what I can do is believe in God's word. And he is the one who will reward those who seek him. Yeah. He is the one who is pleased when I have faith. Amen. So, if you have been diagnosed with a terrible disease, terminal illness, or anything that they say is incurable. Today, in the presence of God, being in this sanctuary, I want to speak to you words of healing. So I want you to lift up your hands. 
Lift up your hands. Breathe in and out. And let me pray for you that you will receive your healing miraculously by the power of the Holy Spirit. Get ready to receive your miracle. Because if you have faith, there is nothing impossible for God. You are going to please God and he will reward you. So, just breathe in and out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come today to ask you, Lord, for my friends who are in big need of a miracle, a miracle of healing. So I begin, Lord, by saying and declaring, Father, your words upon them, that your desire, Lord, is to give us life and abundant life when we are faithful to you, Lord. Your word declares, Father, that through the wounds and injuries that our Lord Jesus Christ suffered, we will receive our healing. Your word declares, Lord, that we can rebuke the devourer. Your word also declares, Father, that the curses are destroyed because on the wood, on Calvary, the Lord Jesus took all those curses and destroyed them. To make us blessed. So whoever is watching and listening. Whoever is present here in the church. Receiving right now. This blessing. I rebuke in the name of Jesus. All illnesses. I destroy any curse against you. Whether it is generational. Or any attack from the evil. Anything that was provoked to you, sent to you, set to you by evildoers and forces of the darkness, I destroy that in the name of Jesus, and I set you free right now. And now, by the wounds of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare that we are healed. So receive your healing, my friend. Receive your healing in your body, in your mind, in your bones, in every area of your system. Your brain, your blood, your heart, your organs, your joints, anything and everything be healed in the name of Jesus. And I release this blessing, believing in the word of God. Amen. So yes, the Lord wants you to have good health and strength. But that is strength, friends. It comes from having joy. It comes from having joy. And what, why, is, why is that, my friend, that we, especially some uh, religious, traditional Christians, they have an issue with having fun and laughing. You know, I was, I was talking with my wife about something funny that happened to my father and to her father. I want to share with you about those things that are silly, but are hilarious. And of course, with all respect to my dad, Eduardo, that is in heaven, and to my father-in-law, Dave, that is in Wills Point. So here is the stories. The story is my dad, who who was a a little bit uh, challenged to have good social interaction with people. He was a great greeter. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. But one minute later, he was stuck. It's like he didn't know what else to say and how to keep the conversation. And quite often, he he found himself saying something awkward or making people feel uncomfortable. And everyone is like, what's wrong with him? So he was just Challenge to, to have a good social interaction with people, not like my mother. But my father, deep down, he wanted to be likable. So one of the things that he did was sneezing in such a funny way. So let me give you the example of what is what he was doing. So he felt the need of the sneezing. And then he goes, ah, 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 ah. (laughs) 
And of course, some of you laughed, right? <laughs> Maybe somebody watching laughed. But probably somebody was thinking, what kind of stuff is that? That's, what are you guys doing there in that church? And that is what happened in reality when my dad did his sneezing. Some people were laughing and others were, were just shocked. And, oh, gosh, that's just ridiculous. What's wrong with these men? Okay, here's my point. Deep down, he wanted your acceptance. He wanted you to like him. That was the reason why he was making this with his sneezing because he wanted everybody to like him. Okay? Of course, when you laugh at something like that, and then suddenly you are just, something happens when you laugh, releases something, and suddenly you are more relaxed. If you learn to have more fun in your home with yourself, go to the mirror, look at yourself, and laugh at yourself, you say, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, and laugh at whatever. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. You have to learn, my friend, to enjoy your day and laugh. Laugh a lot. Now, let me, let me take you to my father-in-law, Papa Dave's stories. So, they go to the restaurant. They eat, you know. And, and this is kind of nasty, but it's, it's a true story. So after they are eating, and my, my papa, Dave, and I, I know you, you papa, you will, you will watch this eventually, and I hope you will not get upset. But anyways, here we go. So they eat, and here's papa with the crowd, you know, the family. And they are walking out of the, the restaurant, right? People, people are watching. You know, when, when people get up from the table, everyone takes a look, and, and here's Papa walking, and this is what he does. He puts his hand, and he's behind, and he does this. <laughs> As he's walking out, he is just waving his hand, and he's behind. Now, if you are smart, you know that that is inappropriate. <laughs> Why will he do this? And then you think, he just farted. He just farted. That, <gasps> that man, that's horrible. And then you get upset until you get it that he's just messing with you. Nobody thought that. You know, <laughs> people were laughing. They say, what's wrong with this man? They were not laughing. Okay. Some people will get it. You know, it's a joke, okay? All right. Friends, when eventually you mature and you relax, you will start laughing at different things in life and you will not be so... <sighs> because it's not good for you. You want more life? Good. You want good health? We believe. I just prayed. We believe in restoration in our health. But... The strength will come from the joy of the Lord. And that joy is just a habit. It's, it's even, either you have it or you don't have it. You, you know how to laugh and enjoy your day or you don't. You take a trip with somebody and, you know, immediately you know if that person is boring or that person is joyful. If that person is going to have fun with you on the trip or that person is going to be miserable sitting there on the trip. Simple as that. Okay. We know the scripture. Without faith, let's read it all together. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For the one who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Again, without faith. What is the key? The key is faith in our lives. So we say, I want more life. We know what is that. I want life with good health and strength. Now, the third thing that we want is more intelligence. And why is that? Well, because we are tired of mistakes. <laughs> we are tired of that. No, I'm not tired. I love making mistakes, Gian. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. I love to have my bank accounts 
in red numbers. I love that. <laughs> I just love to receive notifications from all my creditors and debtors. And, you know, I just love to receive phone calls, people trying to collect. Yeah. You know what? I love to see another car messed up. It's wonderful. I just like it very much. I love to destroy another marriage. It's wonderful. I just love it. You know, I love to lose another arm. I just lost one in another in one accident. I want to lose another arm. That's so fun. <laughs> who who thinks that way? Nobody. But it's real. We all go through big mistakes in our lives, and we say, Everybody. well, what is what we need to learn of this lesson? So I want more intelligence. Intelligence meaning wisdom. And my Bible knowledgeable people. What is the beginning of wisdom? The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. You say, Lord, I want more. I want more life. I, got, I want good health. I want strength. And I want intelligence. And the Lord says, fine. Do you fear me? Uh, what do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah. Do you respect me? Uh, of course, I do. So why is it then that you don't worship me? Why is it then that you don't honor me? Why is it then that you don't serve me? Why is it then that you don't pray to me? Why is it that you don't read my word? Well, I, 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 I don't have an answer. Well, I do have an answer, the Lord says. You don't have any respect for me. You don't fear me. And the beginning of wisdom is precisely the fear of the Lord. Now, what is the main scripture we are reading today? Hebrews 11.6. What is what it says? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Okay, in order to receive that faith, that faith comes by hearing the word of God. So when you take your time every day, not every Sunday, every day you take your time and open the Bible or turn on the Bible if you are a digital reader. <laughs> Turn it on or open your hard copy. Every day, five, ten minutes, you invest reading God's word. You will receive there exactly what the Lord wants you to, to know for that particular moment. Do you want more intelligence, more wisdom? The beginning is the fear of the Lord. And the other thing that you can do is to ask the right question to the right person. You know, it's, it's so interesting. Yesterday, something happened to me. Two different individuals going through difficulties, not the same kind of difficulties, but difficulties in their lives, including money, family, etc. But one, after sharing the problem with me, said, I am willing to open up and share with you my difficulties so you will tell me, what do you think? What is what I am doing wrong? And I said, very good. So we are starting meetings, virtual meetings right now, and then we discuss the issues. Because he's asking the right question to the right person who knows how to fix that particular situation. I'm not saying you have to ask me, but you know people that know answers and they are wise and they are experienced in that particular field. Ask the right question to the right person. But I told you that I have two experiences, right? The second experience happened later. Similar situation. And I said, well, I am willing to help you, if you want to meet, then we can talk about it. The answer was, no, no, thank you, no, I, I'm good. Uh, the Lord is going to help me. And I said, okay. okay I'm not saying I have to be the one with everybody. I just hope that this other guy will find somebody, you know. 
Curiously, both of those individuals are not church members. But one says, I want more intelligence. The other says, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> That's all what I have to say about that. The scripture again, Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But for the one who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is rewarder of those who seek him. You must believe. That's the key. Believe. Believe, believe, believe. What is the next thing that we want? Love. We want love, right? I want to have a good life. I want to have good health and strength. I want to be smart. I want to be wise, right? But I don't want to have all those things and you know, don't have anyone to love or someone that loves me. So we all want love. We want more love. Do you want more love? What is the mistake we make about this? The mistake is that we are seeking in one individual, whether it is, if you are a guy, you are looking for the love in a girl, or if you are a girl, you are looking for the love in a guy, thinking that that person is going to fulfill your needs of love. Humanly speaking, it's understandable, but spiritually speaking, it's a mistake. Because the only one that will satisfy our heart and our needs for love is God. And when we learn to receive that love from the Lord, you will see that in reality, the good thing about you having somebody is not, again, to receive love from that person, but to give love to that person. Your need of love cannot be satisfied by by or through a person. It has to come from the same source of the rest of the things, the Lord. If you are hurting, you are disappointed, whether it's ex-husband or ex-wife or whatever, even hurting with your children. Maybe you are hurting because relationships with your family members, perhaps a relative, or a friend, even a pastor that you loved at some point. You care for him and help him in his ministry. Maybe you were doing business with somebody, that person betrayed you. Any kind of dissatisfaction, unsatisfaction in your life, and you are hurting, remember that the key in order to receive more love from God is to forgive. And I want to take my time one second again to tell you that the foundation of Christianity is forgiveness. Forgiveness is what sustains the whole concept of being a Christian. That's why the Lord Jesus died for you. He paid the price so you can receive the forgiveness of God, but it's also a condition to forgive others. Do you remember the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, and at the end says, and forgive us as we forgive others. So that need of love that you have must come from God, that solution as well. The love of God will satisfy you, my friend. But if you have all this bitterness and this hatred and all these bad feelings and horrible thoughts about somebody, whoever is that person, you are blocking the love of God. Get rid of it and let the Lord fill your heart with love. Now, again, the scripture, without faith it is impossible to please God. We can't please Him. For the one who comes to God must believe that He exists and that He is a rewarder of those who seek Him. Seeking him is going to bring the solution to you, my friend. Seeking him every day. Then is when you can say, well, Lord, I want more of prosperity too. I like the idea of all those things that are being explained. 
Of course I like the idea of good health and strength and wisdom and love, but I don't want to be broke. (laughs) I don't want to be broke. I want to prosper, Lord. Well, precisely for that reason is that I'm going to be sharing soon with you a message that has to do with keys to prosper in life. But quickly, I'm going to tell you that in order to prosper, it has to do with the ability that you must have in your mind of doing something. You have to be creative and inventive and take good care of what the Lord is giving you so you will put those things to work. Because eventually, whatever is what we create, invent, manufacture, repair, or any services we provide, they have to be sold. Because if you don't learn to sell whatever is what you, you provide, whether it's service or products, if you don't connect with the community, there is not going to be an income. So the key begins in, your mind by being able to learn a trade. Prosperity is not going to come to to people that don't want to learn something, especially young people. Young people are exactly in the right moment to learn, especially in these days. We have one church member that this year had already three certifications. (laughs) And this person says, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do, actually, because I got a certification on this, certification on that, certification on this, and now I'm studying for another certification. (laughs) And, And this person says, is that wrong? And I said, no, because you're learning. And right now, there are many things available for everyone to learn. I am so happy that, personally, I got my education. My wife also has a degree My kids also did that, but I am so proud of my children. You know, usually for Christmas, we buy some things for the kids. You know what they asked me? I was amazed. They said, Dad, this Christmas, both, not just one, both said to me, what we want is that you will pay us this particular website where we can learn these things. What do you think? Now, guess how long it took me to say yes. Yes, sir? Would you say days to make a decision? Would you say hours? Seconds? Maybe one second. It it took me a second. I said, you want to learn more? Yeah! I will pay for that. I will pay for that. Of course, here is your Christmas present. Study. Learn. Friends, how are we going to prosper if we don't want to learn? My dear viewer, this is the time for you to get ready for the future. Forget about the problems, okay? There are opportunities. Many people are making a fortune, especially those that are in the medical field. Don't tell me no. (laughs) Clinics, doctors, pharmaceuticals, suppliers, they are making a killing. Because those individuals are seeing the opportunity. That's what you need to do. Think about it, use your mind, and get the training. And of course, once you are learning and you are practicing and you are a good protege, a good apprentice, then you will be able to practice that thing. The next key in your prosperity is to be faithful to God. And if you don't get it, you will not prosper. You think you are making a killing. No. You know what the scripture says? Here's the bad news. (laughs) The wealth of the wicked will come to the just. That's right. Now, next Sunday, precisely, I'm going to be talking to you on Worship Service 220, December 13, 
I live to give. That is the topic of that service. I live to give. And I want to invite you to get ready for that message. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For the one who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is rewarder of those who seek him. It's a matter of believing, right? Believing constantly. But above all the things that we want, what is what we want the most? More of God. I want more of you, Lord. Do you? Do you, my friend? Do you? I hope you do. Because what's the point of having all those things? You know, the Lord Jesus said, if somebody gets all the things in the world, but loses his soul, what's the point? It's not, life is not about, not even family, my friend. Life is about God. For those who claim all the time that my, my family is, you know, family is, is everything. You are mistaken. God is everything. Wow. That's mean. No. That's biblical. Love the Lord with all of your heart, all of your mind. Family comes second. First, the Lord. Do you really want more of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Show it to Him. How? Well, talk to Him more. Read His Word more. Sing to Him more. Dance with Him more. Mm -hmm. Laugh with Him more. Enjoy your days more and more with Him. Mm -hmm. Do you really want more of the Lord? Show it to Him. My friend, I'm not asking you to send me a video of how cute you were dancing for the Lord, you know? Because you don't need to prove anything to me. You dance for the Lord alone. Have fun with the Lord. Enjoy your day with the Lord. Because He is more real than anybody else that you see around. He is more real than anything you see houses, you see furniture, you see vehicles, you see stuff. But all that disappears and vanishes like this. But the Lord, He is real and eternal. He is more eternal, more powerful, more real than anything else. So do you think that when you say, I want more of you, Lord, but you don't pay attention to Him, do you show Him that you care? No. That's why it's important that we see this. Lord, I want more of you. Some people have trouble to connect with God. I want you to come with me. Galatians 4, 6. Listen to this carefully. You are God's children. How many of you say amen? amen. You are God's children. He has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying. Crying what? Abba, Father. Isn't it beautiful? The Spirit of His Son, the Spirit of Jesus, which is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in you is crying, Abba, Father. Now, you know, this Abba is not the band in the 70s, you know? <laughs> We love them, but it's not that Abba. This is a Hebrew word. And you know what is the meaning? Daddy. Daddy. Abba, Father. That's the way that the Lord Jesus saw the good Lord God Almighty. In His humanity, He never felt disconnected from His Father. What about you? Well, Jian, during this season, I felt so lonely. And uh, I really would like to talk to somebody. And on and on, we go on through this. 
Don't you think that I felt the same way? <laughs> Especially when I have the situation of what? Of being infected. Certainly, we all felt that way. We all felt that there was a, a need for human interaction, correct? But after we go through those feelings, eventually we sit down or lay down and in the quiet, especially in the night, and particularly when you are by yourself, and before you go to sleep, you pray. And what is, what, you, you, what is the feeling in that moment that there is one God in heaven that is your Father? And you say to Him, Abba, Father, Daddy, Daddy. You are thinking, you know, I never had a Daddy that was loving. <laughs> my, my dad was mean. Somebody, somebody else will say, as a matter of fact, I never met my father. Somebody else will say, I didn't know who was my father until years later. And somebody else will say, I never knew who my father was. So they feel disconnected on this concept of me and God being one. He, my daddy. Yeah. Well, that is the beauty that you are going to discover when you take your time to start seeing him like this loving father that you never had before. And you call him daddy. Imagine, my friend, that you could start praying now instead of the traditional prayer. Dear God, we thank you. Imagine if we could start praying, daddy, I want to thank you for, isn't it so sweet? Yeah. Daddy, daddy. Thank you for this day. Thank you for my coffee, Daddy. When you finally understand that He is your true Father, the one that you are going to be with for the rest of your life in eternity, that changes things, my friend. The thing is, believing is a lifestyle. Do you realize that? Believing is not like well, you know what? I'm going to be on a diet now. <laughs> Imagine this. You know, I'm going to be in this diet. From now on, I'm not going to eat this or that. From now on, I'm going to eat this. I'm going to be healthy. Well, apply that to idea, to the idea of believing. From now on, I'm going to be a believer. I'm going to believe, you know? And you practice that for a little while like your diet, and then you left it alone. You don't continue with that practice, that diet. It's going to work for you? No. You already know what things are bad for you. Okay. Apply the same concept. Believing is not a diet. Believing is not a pill. Believing is not a solution. Believing is a lifestyle. And I want to take you for a few seconds to this journey in your imagination. It's the journey of your day. When you wake up believing in God. And you say, good morning, Daddy. Good morning, Father. Thank you for this day. You go to the bathroom or Prepare your coffee or drink. And you say, oh, thank you, Daddy, for my coffee. Thank you for my kitchen. You get into your vehicle. You are going to do your things. And before you take off, you say, Lord, can you please send your angels around me to protect me? Guide me, Lord. And you are in your vehicle, and you start hearing the songs, and you praise God, and you keep singing to Him. Are you with me in this imaginary trip? So you go through the whole day, whatever is what you do, but in all moments, you believe. Believing is a lifestyle. It is ingraining you. It's like breathing. 
That's believing, my friends. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But those who believe in Him, that He exists, will be rewarded because we are seeking Him first. You live in a spiritual dimension, my friend. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of the spiritual dimension that you are living in. Do you know why some people receive more than others? Because they believe. <laughs> because they live in a spiritual dimension. And they claim the promises of God. And they declare those promises of God. Lord, you told me in your word that you are going to prosper me and give me abundance. You told me in your word you're going to heal me. You told me in your word that you're going to give me wisdom. You told me in your word that you are making me the head and not the tail. You told me in your word, Lord, that I'm going to be blessed all the days of my life when I am going out, when I am in my house. You told me in your word, I believe, I believe. You live in a, a spiritual dimension. And then you say, do I want more? Let me ask you, do you want more? Yes, you want more. Will you receive more? Yes, you will receive more. When you finally get it, that is because believing is a lifestyle. It's not a Sunday deal. It's a lifestyle. That some people just don't have even a connection with God. I'm going to give you today the opportunity to give your heart to God. Romans 10, 9. If you openly say, Jesus is my Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from death, you will be saved. What if you say a prayer? The prayer is on the screen. All that you need to do, my friend, if you are going to give your heart to God for the first time, read this prayer out loud. Come on, join me. Dear God, help me. I don't have enough faith. I am desperate because I am struggling. I have many needs and many dreams, but I know that only you, Lord, can bless me. I need faith, Lord, please. I am sorry. Please forgive me. You are the only one that is certain in life. You are my God. I open my heart to you, Lord. I confess my sins before you. I need to change. I want to obey you and trust you and serve you forever, my Lord. Starting today, I want to see people in life exactly as you do. Please help me, Lord. My friend, it is here on the cross where everything begins. It's here in this glorious cross where you are forgiven. What if you say with me, I am forgiven and saved by faith in Jesus. Therefore, I can also declare my life is going to be great and blessed this year 2020. Dear friends, receive the blessing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you greatly this week. Have a beautiful Sunday. Enjoy your family and friends. And I'll see you next time. Anytime a heart turns from darkness to light. Anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight. Anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served. I know, I know, I know, I know. Thank you for watching Victory Church. Please feel free to contact us. Our email address is info at vchurch.us and our phone number is 432-614-9798.